Many of you know I have a series on this channel called Brain Worms, uh, also known as Ruin Your Life in 30 Seconds or Less. It's where this merch came from. Essentially, we just look at people uh, that go viral for acting like idiots in public. A lot of them go on to face the consequences. One of the first people we looked at in my first Brain Worms video was this woman from Arizona who went to Target and just started destroying all the masks on the display. Find out she's uh, a QAnon nut. Anyways, take a peek here. Target, I'm not playing this game. This is over. Nobody else do it. I can't do it because I'm a blonde white woman. I'm wearing a fucking forty thousand dollar Rolex. I don't have the right to fix it up. Went on to be known as the $40,000 Rolex woman. She also had another clip taken of her after her husband, her own husband, called the police on her because she was freaking out on some QA non to Take a peek. Did everything that Donald Trump was elected to do. You can read about it on Twitter. You can read about it in the news. All of the all of the deep state politicians, all of that stuff has happened. It's oh, okay. Done. So okay. I was hired to be the, the QAnon so spokesperson. Oh, she also decided to stream the whole thing to Instagram, which she thought would be to her benefit. Turns out quite the opposite. Here we go. It's because I'm a, it's because I'm a white woman with a $40,000 Rolex and a I'm Range Jewish. Rover. You're doing oh. it to me because I'm Jewish. Oh, now it's because she's Jewish. You're doing it to me because I'm Jewish. Oh my God. Needless to say, this woman had a full blown infestation of brain worms. And when you see stuff like this on the internet, you're not thinking about what she's like outside of this hyper-concentrated few minutes of virality, right? Maybe she was a decent mom or a great wife or a decent person all around, but all the internet knows her is this kind of like psychotic QAnon lady. And then eventually, as it always does, the internet moves on to the next flavor of the week. But not before the damage was done. As far as I know, this woman's reputation was ruined. Her husband filed for divorce. Lord knows what other fallout there was from this episode. She had on the internet. But as it turns out, in an incredible stroke of irony, this woman herself is a PR rep. So she's made a living protecting or rehabilitating the public perception of her clients. And now she's the one in the hot seat and she's popping up again all over the news and what appears to be this campaign to rehabilitate her own image. So that brings us to this. A ton of you guys have sent me a link to this video from Vice News. It's called How to Uncancel Yourself After Going Viral for QAnon. I think she's the one spearheading this, probably reaching out. She probably has connections as a PR rep with different media outlets. I have not watched this yet. This is my first pass. I wanted to wait to do this on camera. I don't always do that, uh, but here we go. Let's take a peek, see how she's doing. This was the height of all of the panic and hysteria surrounding the lockdowns. I've been looking forward to this shit all my fucking life. I ended up at the Target store that day. I had heard on the radio on the way over, there's no barbecues, there's no parties, there's no fun, there's no nothing. And I just saw- <laughs> No barbecues? Fuck this! <laughs> Hard to blame her, quite frankly. Imagine having to learn over the radio that there was no more barbecues because of the pandemic. I would have fucked up a mass display at Target too. I lost it. This shit's over, this shit's over, this shit's over, this shit's over. Uh, understatement the of the I century. I was trying to make was that I was not feeling seen, I was not feeling heard. I felt like my freedoms and everything that I had worked for was being taken away from me and well, I couldn't stop it. Welcome to everybody in the fucking world, bro. Fucking, this sounds like some entitlement shit if I've ever heard it. Like this is like, oh, I found out I can't have barbecues with all of my rich fucking snotty friends this summer. So I'm gonna go to Target and have a tantrum and rip the mask off the display. So far unimpressed. Just fucking over. I like the ambient music in the background to make it feel real serious though. Like, man, she must have really been going through it. Stuff that I was saying, you know, was just intelligible. Like I didn't even make sense. Can anybody else do it? Why can't I do it? Because I'm a blonde white woman. Fucking wearing a fucking forty thousand dollar fucking Rolex. I don't have the fucking right to fuck shit up. No, it makes sense. You're referring to the riots which were going on, and you're you're mad because other people were rioting and being praised for it, and you throw a riot in Target and get condemned for it. They're two very different things, however. I guess 10, 15 million views later, now I'm famous. There you go. You know, inside she secretly loves it though. Super I pumped. I first heard about the Probably pandemic. Quite a few weeks before most people. It was January 27th. I was on my way home from opening Nobu here in Scottsdale. Probably the best night of my life, biggest night of my career. My brother called me up, I'll never forget. He said, hey, there's a situation down here in China and it's coming to the US and it's, it's, very, it's very scary. I just started Googling stuff online, pandemic hoax, COVID hoax, you know. Wait, why is the first thing you're Googling is hoax, right? I remember when I first heard the news, I was Googling about coronavirus, like trying to figure out what it was. You don't immediately just assume it's a fucking hoax. 
very clearly is not. <laughs> it just goes to show though how the internet is such a fickle bitch because no matter what you want to believe is true, you will be able to find a version of that online to latch onto. And that's exactly what QAnon was for a lot of people, including this woman, who very well may have just been a normal, privileged Arizona Scottsdale mom uh, before falling down the QAnon rabbit hole. People started to send links. So I just started clicking on everything. And, oh and you start watching like a video on YouTube. Sorry, what are you, my 98 year old grandfather? <laughs> oh, I'm just, someone forwarded me this, will you honest, this? What is this? Grandpa, that, that's a virus. Your computer and I was a virus. Sorry about that. I wanna scroll for a second to the comments, which I did already. Dr. Bo Hightower, if you guys don't know him, he's a chiropractor on YouTube. I've actually done a video where he was featured in it previously. Uh, his comment couldn't be more, couldn't be more right on the money. If white privilege was a person, she just kind of fits the profile. You know, from the videos we saw, the Range Rover, the million dollar mansion in Scottsdale, probably detached from reality. And these, these people are sometimes the easiest victims to fall down these rabbit holes of bullshit because they're already so detached from reality and just have no foundation to be grounded in. You know, you'd click on a video about foods to eat, you know, to keep yourself healthy and boost your immunity in the pandemic. But once you'd click on it, you know, the next 10 videos would be about how there is an imminent genocide being purported by the New World Order under the guise of a health crisis. Okay, was there nowhere in that transition from clicking on like healthy foods during a pandemic to New World Order trying to execute genocide on the United States by implanting microchips in people from Bill Gates' nefarious vaccine. Was there nowhere in between there where you could have just pumped the brakes and been like, well, this is fucking nonsense. No, there wasn't like just anywhere in that transition. There was no period of time where you could have been like, eh, maybe let's, let's log out and go fucking make some oatmeal cookies. I just don't get it. I'm sorry, I'm not, I get heated about this shit because people like to blame the internet. They like to blame, you know, echo chambers and misinformation. It's like, just fucking use your brain, dude. Just use use the God-given meatloaf of a brain that's stuck inside your skull to just use an ounce of logical thinking, an ounce of critical thinking and reasoning to realize when what you're looking at, what you're reading might be complete fucking bullshit. But I had a video in my recommended sidebar that Jesus was coming back to earth as a Trump supporter and he was going to um, f Joe Biden in the ass on inauguration day and it never happened. We are on the dawn of the age of Aquarius. You know, we're, we're, we're on the precipice of a big change in humanity, this great reset. I can, I can only ever think of the ending of 40 year old virgin when I hear someone say age of Aquarius. Just hold on a second. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Aquarius. <clears throat> I apologize, let's continue. We at some point along the line are going to be aided by benevolent spirits and, and aliens, basically. And I could prove it, you know, and I was showing that in my stories. What is she I talking about? I realize now for people looking at it. And this is June 30th on her Instagram story. You just got recruited. Like not knowing like what was going on in my head, it probably looked really bizarre. Ah, uh, yeah, to put it mildly. All you can think about is the worst possible outcomes for this country and ultimately for humanity. And getting out of that, you know, all I can see is a positive future, you know, no matter who is in office. Imagine just not tying your entire life in the well-being of your future to a potential presidential candidate who indubitably does not give a shit about you. Incredible what happens when you can elevate your brain to that level of nirvana. My husband, you know, sat me down and he was like, I feel like we're losing you. This is he was scary. Right. I need you to to snap out of it. You know, this is this is nuts. I wasn't having any of it because one of the things that, you know, the cult does, it convinces you to not trust any of the people that you would trust, especially if they come to you and tell you that what you're doing is wrong. That is the core objective of every successful cult is to get you to lose faith and have distrust in those people that have your best interests at heart. I'm not in the mental health profession, but I can tell you, if you sit down with a doctor and start telling them there are reptilians in the government, <laughs> they are going to hospitalize you. Unless your doctor is also queuing on, huh? When I walked into this mental health evaluation facility and it was full of drug addicts and 
and homeless people. It was such a far cry from, you know, where I had come from. I'm rich, bitch. I don't fuck with homeless people. What is this shit? Get me out of here. <laughs> If I could tell you the level of, of hateful communication that I would get every single day no on surprise. my phone no for surprise. months, kill yourself, I hope you die, here are instructions on how to kill yourself, I put a spell on your two little dogs and they're gonna die tonight. Not the dogs! Not the dogs! No surprise she got an incredible amount of death threats and hate comments, blah, blah, blah. I will say, it's one thing to like, you know, I, I do a lot of like poking fun at people that are acting stupid uh, on the internet for the sake of entertainment, but I feel like if you're the type of person to take it to that next level and personally send someone death threats or some fucked up shit, like you, you also have brain worms just as bad as the person you're sending the message to, in my opinion. I didn't want to live in a hole, you know? I didn't want to live in a hole, but I didn't know what to do, and I wanted to keep going, and I wanted to empower other people and show other people how I did it because it was not easy. What a true hero. You know what I find interesting is this is a, you know, a Vice News special. I imagine it's, it's, public perception is crazy, right? Because you look at, you look at people that live in the public eye and they have teams of people that are dedicated to making sure that the perception of them is squeaky clean or coming across the way they want it to. A bad story comes out, you have your PR guy try to get ahead of it, spin it a certain way. So much about public figures is not about who they actually are, it's about how they are perceived by the general population. So it's funny to watch this girl right now who clearly has connections because this is the industry that she's in. She's going by the playbook, you know? You do a sit down interview that's very serious. You talk about the situation and how you had to overcome this obstacle to regain what you had lost. I wouldn't be surprised if she paid Vice to do this piece on her. It's just crazy because most people don't have access to these resources. It's the perfect brand for me because I am really the first person to own crazy. I have a book deal, which Here she will goes. be multiple books. I know it will be a bestseller. I have a television series. Hold the like fucking a phone a second. I have a television series that's like a reality show style thing. God, this is so, this is so grimy, dude. I feel like I need to shower. I feel like I got to shower. This is how, this is how the world works though. It really is. I have a book, I'm the first person to own crazy. I have a book deal. I sold the rights to a television show. The book's gonna be a number one bestseller. She's instantly turning the most catastrophic moment in her life and spinning it because of the resources and the connections into what's going to make her probably several million dollars. To better themselves if they've screwed up. People have this such is, varied opinions about is, me. This is just rubbing me you wrong. Know, it really hurts my feelings when people say that I'm this, you know, entitled, spoiled person. Hmm. Does it hurt your feelings maybe because it's true? Usually that's the stuff that hurts the worst. They see the Rolex or whatever and they <laughs> make a judgment. I think I'm very easy to hate. At first glance, I guess. No, not glance. No, not first glance. It's literally by your actions. We hate you because of your actions for using your $40,000 Rolex as a flex towards retail workers when you destroyed their store over some dumb shit. Oh, tears at the end. Couple of tears. Ended it with the tears. Guarantee you she chose. She was the, she was the executive producer on that shot. Make sure you end the video with me wiping tears because of how fucking difficult it was to bear my soul in this tell-all interview about the horrid experience of getting canceled online after I acted like a fucking fool. So that's the Vice video. She's taken that first big step uh, to having a multi-million dollar career as a recovering QAnon. I feel like I expressed mostly how I felt throughout the video. Just felt, it just feels grimy a little bit that she's gonna have such a fat W from such a, uh, pathetic event in her life. So let me know what you guys think. Did the, the brain worms target mask lady win you over with her beautifully produced Vice interview with that little crying scene at the end? Or are you calling bullshit? I don't know, man. What I do know is I appreciate you watching and I implore you to hire your own PR rep to repair your shit ass reputation so you can stand up out that computer chair you're in right now, pull down your pants and hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. I'll see you soon with a brand new episode of Brain Worms coming up in a bit shop.leonlush.com to get your merch if you want it. Appreciate you. See you in the next one. Peace.